Driveway. Yeah. We're lucky there's no scraping. Okay, do you know the address? Let me pull it out. Trina, where are we going? Another party. Another party. Like it's just ended. Oh Katrina and Tim subscribers, today's today's episode is about when you move here. One of the biggest challenges you're going to have is that you're leaving all your friends and family behind, and they're they're halfway across the world in a completely different time zone. Um, but Katrina is going to talk a little bit today about how she made friends when she came here. Yeah. So. Um, it's really good that, you know, we're in the time where technology is already there. So, I remember when I first moved here back in San Francisco. So, I don't know anybody. Like, literally, I don't know nobody there. Like, any Filipino. So, what I did is, on Facebook, I just searched Filipino that lives in San Francisco. Something like that. And then I've, I've seen some who, you know, Filipinos whose address is San Francisco. And then I started messaging them, messaging them one by one, like, oh, hi, hello, I just came here. Where do you live here in San Francisco? So luckily, I have this friend. Her name is Dessa Krasnopolsky. So she, she, she messaged me back, and it happened that she only lived five blocks away from me. And then, so I was like, oh, that's cool, da da da. And then one day, like on the grocery, she saw Tim and she's like, that guy sounds familiar, that, that guy looks familiar. And then I think, I don't know if, if she called Tim or she, she no, said- she called you. She said she called you out. When she yeah, but I think she saw you first. Yeah. She recognized you first. Yeah. So yeah, that's something like that. And then that's the start of it. And then we, we so she replied, so we kind of like started talking and then we met each other in a grocery and then we rescheduled a meetup with uh, with Judy, with a few other girls, with Judy and Des uh, with Jonna. And it's kind of the start of it. Mm -hmm. So I think what I, well, what I can tell you guys is that when you move to a different country, like honestly I'm not, it's not that I'm not friendly but I'm always shy to approach first, it's not my personality. like. Um, sometimes um, th people think I'm like snob, but I'm just really shy to like, you know, talk to people like right away. But when you move to another country, you need to do that because, you know, it's, it's pretty hard to not have any friends. So, yeah, you need you need those that will help you with like homesickness and you know, because in reality, you can just you can't just live with your husband alone. It's not gonna work like that. So you need friends, you need friends, you need social life and yeah that helps that you know you talk to other people and be friendly. Yeah and what's cool is <coughs> you know the thing, little known fact but um, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of people who go from the Philippines to the United States through K-1 visa. In fact um, the Philippines Philippines has the highest number of K-1 visa applications um, in, in the United States. And so um, there's a lot of people who have the same ex similar experience. And if you think about Katrina's friends, I mean... Um, All of them. De yeah, Dessa was through through a K-1. She mm -hmm. met um, she met Michael through what? They were... Uh, I think it's a, like a, game a, a gaming app or... 
or it, on Facebook something, I forgot. Yeah, they were, it was like, they were on like a, some sort of gaming app or something like that, and they started chatting. Um, so that's cool. They're super, super nice people. Michael is super outgoing, and Dessa is uh, super friendly, very smart and ambitious. Um, Jonah met, Jonah met, met her husband through, um, they, they met online, they met online as well. Yeah, um, he's so. he's a Filipino American. Yeah, I think he was like raised in Canada or something. Yeah, or, or mm -hmm. Canadian, Canadian Filipino. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Judy, she met she met Keith. How did you meet Keith? It was a friend of a friend, right? Yeah, through a friend. They were introduced to each other. Yeah, but the, the, the cool thing is, is that. So many people go through this exact same experience, and if, mm -hmm. if you're going, through, if you're in an LDR right now, and you're, you're, and you're going to be transitioning to moving to the United States, I mean, Katrina, would you recommend people just getting on Facebook now and trying to find people to in the location where they're going to be living? Yeah, like, um, well, if you guys are you know, are doing transition and stuff. There's a lot of groups that I also belong to. There's a lot of Facebook groups that can help you. Like there's a K1 visa adjustment group. There's like marriage life conversation group, which is with that one, I love that group because that's like, we are all like Filipinos, Filipinas there that's married to, to American or somewhere from other, I think from other country. But you know, we're able to share all their experiences and it's it's just like a really like a community by just like how do you pack your like buy in box you can ask anything and everything under the sun there like or where you can buy calamity seed plant where you can buy this seeds per plant like it's such a community it's like a community where everything you need in america you can like ask people there and they can help you you can you can find somewhere to buy longa pizza the egg dried fish so don't worry guys there will be a lot of people who are willing to help you we can help you we can, you can ask us questions and yeah you'll be just fine i mean homesickness will be there that's for sure but it's just like with any other you know with any other places like even if you go to like just a, a different city you're gonna feel homesick but just just remember like if you're gonna transition like think of why you're doing it at the, at the first place you want to be with the love of your life you want to spend the rest of your life with him so that's why you always think it's like okay i'm gonna go to family with this person i know it's gonna be challenging that i'm gonna be away from my family but i'm gonna build my own family and that's gonna be what i'm gonna be looking forward to so you're gonna be okay yeah why don't we um i think what we'll do is we'll take katrina if you get all the links we can just put them in the in the uh just look below and we'll just go ahead and put them in the, in the video description below we'll put links to all the different groups yeah. um, the other nice thing about those is that if you come over and if you ever run into problems or you need resources and stuff like that all the people there are really good at telling you about the resources that you can yeah. you have access to whether there's you know if you have financial issues or if you have an issue with your relationship there's um there's a very supportive group there to, to look out for you yeah they can help you like step by step and just like everything like everything that you can ask, there will be people there to help you. So take the exit. Yeah, then turn right. It'll be fine. Yeah, everything, everything will be good. And uh, you know, it's like I think as you know, Katrina's talking about. There's the reason you're moving over is because you want to you want to be with somebody. And you know, all good things in life, I think it takes it takes work, it takes time, and it takes effort. And so. Um, you know, remember as you go through this process, you're probably you're, you're, you're definitely certainly going to go through some challenges. But you know, in our case, there was there were challenges, but they were all certainly worth it. Yeah, it's going to be worth it. In four miles, turn left onto Northeast 39. Because whether you let's say whether you you know end up marrying someone in the Philippines, more or less, it's not that you're going to live with your your par your family, or you're going to move in a different place too. So this is a bit more. You know, it's obviously it's different because it's a different country, but just look forward to like, you know, new adventures, like lots of nice places to explore here in the United States. And like for me, honestly, what I'm most excited about is like raising my kid here. I mean, Philippines is great. Like, you know, 
I saw that I'm not. I don't like Philippines. I love Philippines, and I really love for my future kids to, you know, to know our culture. But I just really want to be able to raise my kids in like you know, probably better education and more opportunity. So I'm really excited about that. So yeah. Now, how did um, so Annalisa? She's a girl who we're we're going to her house right now. Mm -hmm. um, do you know how she met her husband? Actually, I don't know. No, I haven't asked her. But she already has. She has. She has one. She has one child now. Yeah, she has a uh, like one year old boy, and that kid is uh, her stepson. And she has a stepson. Yeah. Yeah. This is. Um, so you see a lot of it, and, and actually, most of the people when we go to this party, most of the people are um, were married and went through the K one visa process, yeah, right? Yeah, like probably all of them. Is there a single one that has, wasn't going through a K-1 visa? No, they're all like with someone. They're all married, I think. Okay. And, um, okay, so they, 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 they all grew up in the Philippines and they all came came over here through, through a K-1 visa. Yeah. Is there, um, do you, know how, do you know how most of them met, or? Not really. I think Celeste met her husband probably online, too. Yeah, I think Neri, um, her, she, she sent a message to her husband on Facebook, right? Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I remember them telling me that story. Yeah. That's a really sweet story. Mm -hmm. See, you don't even need a you don't even need to have a dating website. I mean, you can just go message people on Facebook. Yeah. But I think they, they in that case it was a it was a friend of a friend. Yeah, like they they have some mutual connection. Yeah. So yeah, it worked out for them. I think Atinari you move here. A year ago, so yeah, she loved it. Yeah, and there's now come, come to think about it, like so we're going to this, we're going to a Filipino gathering. We don't go to all of them just because, uh, for whatever reason, there's time conflicts or there's things that we we have to do. Mm -hmm. um, but how often do you would you say these events are going on? Once a month, twice a month? Yeah, like if I have to attend all of it. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what. Oh yeah, I got invited. I think two weeks ago, like for like a swimming, mm -hmm. but we weren't able to go. So at least twice a month, especially summertime, it's almost like every week. Yeah, there's always like gonna be event because Filipinas wants to like you know they, they wanna get we wanna gather we wanna chica we wanna talk in Tagalog and you know because we miss it so we always as much as we can do gatherings. Especially in summertime. Yeah, and I would actually say for I don't think that there's a big, big Filipino community in uh, in and around Portland. It's certainly not as big as what there was in, in San Francisco, but it seems like there's no shortage of people to get together with and meet with. If you're mm -hmm. if you're motivated and you're outgoing, you'll you you will find people to hang out with. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Go look in the description. There will be links to all the different Facebook groups that you can you can join and be part of. Um, and then just search, just like do what Katrina did, and search for search for people in the, the area that you're moving. And mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe even if you if you're not in the process of moving, but you're talking to somebody, say for example, you meet somebody from Minneapolis, and uh, you know, you know, be, be, be sure you check out the weather, and then ask ask the people who move there if they if they like it. And, <laughs> Um, if it sounds yeah. miserable, then maybe you find somebody else. Yeah, like, <laughs> I mean, no, that's true. Cause as I, I as I was as I have told you guys on my on my previous video, it's all about emotional and practical compatibility. But like, for for instance, like if you think that that weather is something that you know you cannot you cannot tolerate, then you know don't move in Minneapolis, right? Like. I mean, of course, it, it's it's not like the the biggest deal in the world, but it's all practical and emotional compatibility. Yeah, so. you just need to make sure that that's something. It's up to. That's you. an environment that you can live in. And there's certain things that certain people can't handle. I know that there's some people who have sensitivity to the sun, um, and they can't move to, you know, Vegas or Phoenix just because of the heat and the sun. So, uh, those are all factors to consider. And yeah, in the U.S., there's a lot of different types of climates. It's not just. It's not just one. You have cold and you have hot. Yeah. You have rainy. We here. It's it's just rainy. It's not super cold. It's not super hot. It's just it rains more than uh, more than the average city in America. Is it really like nothing like this in other states? Uh, well, Washington and Oregon are probably the 
Pacific Northwest, Portland, Seattle are probably the rainiest. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, but it's different. Like if you go, if you were to live in the Northeast, it doesn't, it doesn't rain as much, but then you get... Oh, are you getting in the street? Yeah. You get really, really terrible snow and ice. Um, you know, in San Francisco, the weather's super mild. It's never super hot. It's never super cold. It doesn't snow there. Yeah. Um, but here, at least you get like really, really warm summers, which is nice. Yeah. And you get four, you get four seasons. See, the thing is, it's hard. Like, I like spring and summer here, and fall too, except for the rain. But then the problem with San Francisco is it's always so cold. We we never get like real summer there. So I don't know. It's hard to choose whether I like San Francisco weather or here. They both have like. But yeah, I'm, I'm liking the Four Seasons now because it's always like nostalgic when it approach, it's approaching. Like today, like when it, when we went out, I was driving. It reminds me of when we just moved here. Like the weather, it's very nostalgic. Oh yeah, super nice. You know what it, it means is that. Remember, um, actually, what's nice is, so winter weather means that you can, you can eat a little bit more, <laughs> you can let yourself go a little bit because you wear your winter clothes, it gives you a chance to let loose. <laughs> yeah, exactly. the, yeah, you don't want to go too, you don't want to go too far, but it's a little, a little less pressure. Getting close, yeah, we're getting close, so I think it's 39th Avenue. Yeah, we're a little bit late. So. Yeah, we're running on Filipino time. It's 510. <laughs> Probably we're supposed to start at 5, so we're gonna be about 20 minutes late. Yeah, hopefully, we haven't started yet. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, you get there, like it's the perfect time to get there is get there when they're serving food. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. And then leave after you eat, eat and run. That's right. Oh, we'll, we love that. We'll be there for 30 minutes and then we're, we're taking off. <laughs> well, see, this is why you don't have to go to Filipino restaurants. It's because there's, there's always a Filipino gathering where you can eat food <laughs> and you can engage with people. Probably about 25 minutes away. 25 minutes away from where we live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that person just ran the red light. Yeah. It's wow. uh, breaking the law. Uh -oh. Breaking the law. Probably like Filipino spaghetti there. Yeah, I know Lisa said to not bring any food anymore. Mm -hmm. She probably cooked everything. Oh. That's gonna be nice for her and the friends cook something. Yeah, maybe we're gonna have a. We should have a Christmas party or Thanksgiving party, some winter party or something like that. Yeah, we're thinking of doing that. Some sort of celebration at our house. We, we haven't had anybody over because our our house has been under construction. Just a little bit, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. We've been, been, been doing work around the house and so... Turn left onto Northeast 39th Street. So I think now's the time, now's the time to have a gathering. Halloween party. Oh yeah, we could have a <laughs> Halloween party. They did once last year. I think I wasn't being invited, but I never, I, I never did a Halloween party in my life. Really? Well, you can do a Halloween party and you can have costumes. Like, yeah, I've never done it in my life. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's true. See, that'd be fun. You just have costumes and, and kids can, like, mm -hmm. 
<laughs> they can do egg hunting in their house. They don't, they don't do egg hunting on, on Halloween. That's Easter. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Oh my god, that's so funny. That's true. It's candy. I was thinking of candy and, and basket. That's true. It's e Easter. <laughs> Just have a bunch of candy handouts. See, like I was thinking about, like when I hand out, hand out candy with my students. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's actually. <laughs> oh my god, that's quite a kind of video. That's just stupid. Oh, that's fine. It's fine. We all make mistakes. <laughs> oh, I, we can make it different this time. Yeah, we can do. Uh, <laughs> we can we can uh, do, do Easter egg hunt and uh, Halloween. No, just egg hunting. I just want egg hunting. I see. <laughs> just because. <laughs> Actually, what day is Halloween this year? I don't even know. Maybe we should do that. It's a, a month away. Yeah. Our house should all be taken care of. Yeah. I, I forgot who invited me. I think Celeste. They, we were attending a Halloween party, or maybe Nelga. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't have costume. 600 feet. Turn right on to Northeast 143rd Avenue. Okay. Looks like we're rolling in. Coming up on the party. Here we go. In a quarter mile, turn left onto Northeast 45th Street. Okay. Oh, that's a pretty house. Oh, look, that big tree came down right there. Neighborhood kind of looks like your mom's neighborhood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice over here. Yeah, it turn left onto Northeast 25th Street, then turn right onto Northeast 142nd Avenue. I see a line of cars. Wait. Four five one seven. Four five one seven. Okay. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, we've we've arrived. Let we've me... arrived at the Filipino party. Is that how we said that I wave at? I have no idea. No idea. I said the husband. But... Okay. Let's turn around. Okay, guys. We're gonna try and get some some vlog footage for you. Not so close that you can't get out. You can be able to get out without you have enough room? No. It's okay. Oh, It's a wide road. There's plenty of room. All right, don't forget, if you're moving here, you're in LDR, check the links below for resources on Facebook, different groups that you can join if you have questions. Um, and don't forget, like, subscribe, share with your friends. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye, Mom. theme after every to begin every video don't like, put this with part of the video <laughs> have something on my teeth mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hold on we're gonna start it
everybody! So we're back. Um, hello, Katrinins and viewers. So um, we're heading home right now. We're done with the party, and um, yeah, so we gotta you gotta leave. It's about like almost seven o'clock right now. But it was really fun. There's a lot of food. I definitely ate a lot. It's really good. So yeah, it was really nice. It's a nice party. Yeah, I think uh, one of the takeaways for me was. We haven't had a gathering at our house in a long time, and everybody else is doing something. Um, Annalisa and her husband, uh, Dennis, they did, um, or Dan, Dan the man, they're doing a birthday party for their, their seven-year-old son. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just a good good excuse to have people over, and you can always, there's always a good excuse to have people over. So yeah. everybody's super nice and friendly. Um, Get to have really good food and yeah i think it's our, our turn to our turn to yeah we might show a party as well we're gonna talk about and plan it so maybe a housewarming a late one <laughs> yeah we've been, only been in our house for like two years it's time to have the warming <laughs> yeah oh, is it two years two years two in years, october right? yeah that's right and you're on your three-year anniversary here next week yep september september 6th katrina will have been the U.S. now for three years. Yeah, I can't believe it. It's so fast. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, how about, how about your friends? How long have they been here in the States? Um, I don't really know. I think Celeste came here earlier than me. Uh-huh. I think she's going four years already. Yeah, and she has two kids. Two kids in four years. Plus a, well, plus a prior two child. kids in one year, imagine. Oh, yeah, 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 she had... So that's really cool. Like, she got pregnant five weeks after she gave birth, I think. Okay. So they're within the civil wow. Yeah. It's amazing. It's pretty bold move. Mm -hmm. And that's even planned, so... Yeah, it's nice, but... Yeah. Um, I think Nari just moved here last year in February. Yeah, she's February 2017. Yeah, so she's just new. Abby, you see how quick you, we just went to this gathering and uh, I'm going to include some clips of the gathering and you guys will see it, but it's, it's amazing how quickly in such a short period of time people can make, make friends yeah. and grow their own, grow their own community in a completely different country. And I think what's good about the Filipino community our Filipino culture is that you don't need to be literally invited to go on a party. Like, because I mean, in, I think in here in America, you just invite the people that you know. But in the Philippines, as long as you know someone that's invited, it's almost like, you know, it's almost like it, people accept it that they bring along some friends. And it's okay. Like, we're totally fine with that. It doesn't have to be like someone we know. So people, you know, people here are very open and like, you know, friends and friends of friends. So that's how the community gets bigger. Yeah. And you know, the other thing that's really nice is, um, I think all the husbands too, all yeah. the husbands are super nice guys. They're very supportive. Like, I, I haven't met one who's a, who's a jerk and I think they all, I think they all um, encourage and support their wives to have friends and their, um, they embrace the culture. So. Yeah. I think that's really nice. And you know, you know what? That's one thing that's important. That if you're still, if you're still just dating someone, I think um, if you're just dating someone from another country, I think it's gonna be a good, um, a good thing that that person cares for you and your family. And it doesn't have to be like about money or whatnot, but just, um, just like your well-being in general, like your social life and. Is he gonna be supportive if you know you're gonna want to have friends in America? You know those things. You know you can like start talking about it because there's also some instance where some Filipinas were um, they're not their husbands are not letting them to go to friends, you know, to mingle and socialize. So it could happen. So if that, then you know it's like it's not good. Yeah, it's uh, but yeah, I mean if you if you're good during the vetting process. And um, you get to know people before you come over. I think that's a that's a huge benefit. But yeah, of all the 
I don't think I've met. I mean, I think of all the, all your friends and all their husbands, they're all super nice guys. Yeah, I think so. Oh, you think about, uh, you know, back in San Francisco, um, Michael, Daniel, Gene, they're all, all super nice people. Of course, Keith. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, Keith too. Uncle Keith. Yeah. He took care of our dogs and he treated yeah. our dogs like they're his, like they're his own. Super, super nice. I know. I miss those dogs. So yeah, I mean, yeah, you're gonna be good. So if you have questions about like if you're coming here and you're transitioning to come into the United States, let us know and maybe we can help you and we can tell you like things to do. I know for sure join the join the groups look down in the comments and um, there's Facebook groups where you can talk and you can um, engage with other girls who are going through the process and I think mm -hmm. that's the that's probably one of the most important first steps yeah I remember when um, when I'm doing my K1 visa although Tim um, hired a hired an agency they will basically just pass the paperwork for you but after they pass it you're basically on your own. I mean, they are not the one waiting for the status for you. So you're going to basically do it on your own. So after they filed all the paperwork, which is good, Tim didn't have to do anything. After that, then you ha I have to wait for like uh, mails and like emails. And I have to check the status online. And if not for that group, I wouldn't know anything. Like I wouldn't know the process. So I think that group, if you can search on Facebook, it's K1 Visa Adjustment. And there's also like K1, K1 Visa group. Maybe yeah, we can just put it down below. But yeah, so it's going to be really helpful. Like if you don't mind the paperwork, guys, you can just do it on your own. Because I've heard it's pretty easy. And then they will like help you like through like the step by step. Yeah, if you, if you don't like the paperwork, they'll go through the... Uh... Yeah, I just used an online online service where it's super, they made it super simple. All you do is you just fill out, you go through and you just fill out box, box, all these different boxes. And then you hit submit and then it, it creates all the paperwork for you. And yeah. uh, for me, I hate paperwork, so that's, that's ideal. Well, gonna make sure that you guys are healthy if you're doing the medical because if you have a spot or like a scar on your lungs whether you you don't have a TB or not you still have to do like a six months treatment so that's kind of sucks like we've had to do that What's the... What do we need? I don't know. Food. Lots of Filipino food. So you got food? Okay. Wait, we have KTV, right? Well, we need to set it up because what we have is just the... I don't know if the one that we have is working. You want to get a song chip? Probably. Okay. You know what's, what they get now is the one... Like, it's pretty cheap, like the microphone with like... I don't know how you use it, but... The mic that has that has everything already. You don't need the chip or whatnot. I don't know. It's like pretty common now. I forgot what they call it. But... Oh, let's find it. Well, this well this one has all the songs in it, but usually they have like song chips that you can put inside of it. But we'll get the song chips. You can get a lechon if you want. People seem to like it. Yeah, people love lechon. I don't know. I don't. I don't get it so much. I'm not really a lechon fan. We don't have to get that. We can just get. We can just order Filipino food. Yeah. Is there a place that we can have cater it? I'm sure there is. Yeah, because I don't want you to have to do all the work for her. Well, I can hire Adinari. Yeah, but if your friends want to help you. 